I call this meeting to order of the Santa Barbara County Board of Education special meeting, uh, primarily interviewing candidates to fill the position for trustee area two. Um, we will start as we do with the Pledge of Allegiance, Mr. Porter. So as we stand for the pledge today, uh, let's remember that what we do on school boards is almost a uniquely American experience. And uh, we're all charged with the stewardship to do that. So I invite you to think about that as we salute our nation today. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Porter. And now we will go to our, um, we'll skip that, roll call. Okay, Mrs. Carney. Here. Mrs. Zaney. Here. Mrs. DeWord. Uh, here. Sorry. Mrs. Frost. Here. Mr. Howell. Here. Mr. Porter. And present. Great. I don't believe there's any changes to the agenda today with the exception that our Spanish interpreter isn't here yet. So when they arrive, we will introduce them and let them do their um, announcement. Uh, do we have any public comments today? Oh, sorry. Uh, I have lots of comments today, but they have to do with the meeting, so we'll cover those in a minute. Uh, any board comments today, this morning? Uh, do we have any public comments today? No. All right, then we're on to the action item to interview our candidate for a provisional appointment for the Board of Trustees area number two. Um, and I'm going to skip that because now I'm right here. Um, if a candidate does show up before their appointment time and enter the room, I will be using some very carefully put together words to let them know that they will wait outside for their turn, that we don't want an unfair advantage of any applicant sitting in on another applicant's interview. This is, of course, a public meeting, um, and that we would ask that they respect that request. Um, the procedure that I've thought about for today is that I will welcome the candidate and then introduce, ask the board just to say their name so that each board member, they can be, have a chance to know which one is who. Um, and then Ms. Daney will ask the questions. And after each question, she will ask the board members if they have any follow-up questions. And remember, it's just a follow-up question to that question. And um, it, we want to keep it concise. And then when that's finished, um, she'll call on board members to ask their question, and we'll get the answer and then move on. Um, and the question should only be about clarification and make maybe more expansive if there's something that's too limited. Uh, after the last question, um, Ms. Daney will ask the board if they have any other questions about that last question, uh, and also if you have any questions about the application. We'll do those at the end if we have time. Uh, we'll, I will be the timekeeper. I'll be watching the clock and see how we're doing. And then at the end, I will thank the candidate and excuse them. Um, I had a question about telling the candidates that we will be deliberating on Monday. Yes. We should announce that. Yes, so. and we might want to ask them if they're available for a phone call on Monday or if they'll be in, in the area or they'll be uh, by their phones if they wouldn't mind uh, picking up a call. The reason for that is um, that we're putting together the agenda for Thursday, the board's agenda for Thursday, and need to get that out on Monday with the individual's name. So after deliberations and selection, ideally, 
will con we'll contact that individual as well as the others. But if they accept, um, then we'll be able to put their name on the agenda and send it out uh, to the public and for you. So it would be really helpful if they would be available on Monday to uh, receive a call. Um, and that would be for, for all of the candidates. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. And I also wanted to fill in for some in the room who may not have seen the information about um, two of the candidates are going to interview by Zoom today, and that's what why we're set up the way we are and what all of this is in here. Um, Mr. Bird is unavailable in person, but he will be Zooming in in just a couple of minutes here for his interview, and um, Ms. Osgood is likewise going to Zoom in during her interview time. And this is set here so that they can pick up my voice and Ms. Daney's voice for asking the questions. Um, they will also be able to hear the other board members, but the primary input will be from this angle. And the screen is obviously for us to see them and for them to see us. So it, we'll see. This is a real adventure. And, and I just, I, I just want to note it, it was a, an enlightenment that we all had so assumed that interviews would be in person, we didn't put that on the application. We just said interviews yeah. would be Friday without in person. And the requests were made, and we, after much deliberation, we figured out this was the best way to do it. Okay, are there any questions? Did I forget anything? All right. Then we will be waiting for Mr. Bird. Well, with um, thanks to the communications team for making all of oh, this work yes. together on that. And Allie, who's, I think, hearing us, I think we're ready to allow uh, Tyree Bird into the Zoom room. Thank you. Yes. Um, hello. Hello. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Okay, perfect. Okay, great. Well, um, welcome, Mr. Bird. So, uh, I, I'll start with some introductions. If I may, I want to welcome you to the interview. And my name is Judy Frost, and I'm the chair of the board. And I'd like to start on my right and have the board members introduce themselves. Good morning, Mr. Bird. My name is Maggie Daney. Hi there, I'm Mary Beth Cardi. Joe Howell. Michelle DeWord. Bruce Porter. Good morning, Susan Salcedo, County Superintendent. Hi, Terry. This is Anna Freeman. All right. Uh, Mrs. Daney yeah, is. Good morning. Good morning. Mrs. Daney is going to go through the questions with you, and after each question, board members will have a chance to do a follow up there's something that they would like more information on, and then we'll go on from there. So uh, I think we shall begin. First of all, um, thank you for your interest. We appreciate your interest in serving in the provisional term for trustee area number two. And we do have a number of set questions that each candidate will be getting the same questions, just so you know. Um, question number one, we have reviewed your application and resume. We would like to get to know you better here in person or via Zoom. Um, please tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in serving with the County Board of Education. Um, thank you. Um, so uh, I'm currently a fourth year student at UCSB. And um, education was something that was stressed uh, to me from a very early age from my parents, uh, growing up with a parent that was a high school teacher. And I feel that I can uh, 
bring a unique perspective to the board um, as I've seen um, how teachers interact with administration, uh, with my parents, and um, I've also seen how sometimes um, students can, uh, the system can fail students. Uh, I, grew, I grew up with a younger brother that had a learning disability, and he was unable to get the um, help that he needed in order to uh, really, you know, kind of like the equity that he would need to succeed in school. Um, luckily, he had a great support system at home, which allowed him to go on to university uh, at San Jose State. But um, I feel like having experience and seeing all these perspectives, I feel like I can, I can really bring this unique perspective to the board as well as um, gain experience, kind of learning, uh, you know, the administration side of uh, the, the education system. Thank you. I now defer to my fellow board members. Does anyone have a question pertinent to this question? All right, apparently not. We're going to move to question number two, Tyree. Yours would be one vote on a collective board of seven. The board has one collective voice, although there may be differing ideas and opinions. How would you support board decisions publicly if you were in the minority of that vote? Um, I think publicly, I, I just need to emphasize that I firmly believe in the democratic process and that regardless of my uh, personal beliefs about a case or a something that the board uh, put up to a vote, uh, I believe in the democratic uh, process and that any decision that was um, the board has made via a democratic process, um, I just support. Do any board members have follow-up questions to that answer? All right, we're going to move to question number three. The board members and county superintendent are elected officials and have separate responsibilities. Board members are elected by voters who reside in their respective trustee areas. The county superintendent is elected by voters countywide. As a board member, in what ways will you work collaboratively with your fellow board members as well as with the county superintendent? Um, I think the best way to work with the uh, county board members would be to you know, have meetings with the board and really kind of get to know each other and get to know what our, each other's areas of concern are. Um, I think a big part of collaboration is being able to understand you know where both sides are coming from, and if we can find uh, you know a common ground, or or even just um, a a place where the uh, we can come to an understanding, I feel like um, we could really uh, work together to solve issues that voters have and other constituents in the area. Fellow board members, anyone have a question for Mr. Uh, Burt? All right, we're down to question number four. County boards play an intermediate appellate role for expulsions, interdistrict transfers, and charter school petitions. How do you see the relationship between the County Board of Education and local school board decisions? Um, I, I, I support the uh, local school board's autonomy and their ability to make decisions. Um, I believe that the relationship between the County Board of Education and local school boards is, the County Board of Education is like a third party, um, a neutral third party. That will, I can like kind of just, uh, if there is a, a disagreement between a party and the local school board, you know, the County Board of Education can really um, uh, be a third party and kind of like review the facts of the case and, and uh, ensure that each party's uh, rights were respected within this respective case. Anyone have a follow-on question to this question? 
Apparently not. We are now at our concluding question. Uh, Mr. Bird, would you like to conclude with a closing statement? Um, yes, please. Uh, I would like to first thank the board for uh, allowing this Zoom accommodation. I know this isn't exactly ideal. Um, I'd also like to thank the board for its time uh, and also the um, opportunity and consideration for this very important position. You're welcome. Now I defer to my fellow board members. Are there any follow-on questions to the applicant's application? Well, Mr. Bird, apparently not. You've been very informative, and uh, I want to thank you for your time. And I now turn the meeting back to Mrs. Frost. Hello, Mr. Bird. Um, I want to thank you very much for your time and interest in this position and putting in an application and being able to accommodate a Zoom meeting this morning. Um, Our plan is that we will interview all the candidates today and that we will meet again on Monday morning and make our deliberations. Would you be available Monday um, for a phone call? Yes, you would. Yes. Okay, great. And um, I think that's everything. I think that is. I think that, that we have concluded the end of the interview. Thank you very much again. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye. Matt, is there the is the delay just built into the does it depend on his connection or is it just inevitable? I, I'm trying to figure that out. When we did our testing yesterday, there was no delay. Mm -hmm. But that was with Allie on her laptop in the courtyard. Oh. So but I know it's not a distance issue. It could be a combination. Yeah. So so I, I believe we have a break before the next yeah. Zoom candidate. So I'm yes. going to take the laptop and get okay. signed in. Um, and that, yeah, that's all I can say is we tested with the exact same thing. elements yesterday. So it could be a bandwidth issue. If you don't... If you look at his image and, and not read, yeah. it, it's speaking, it's, it's, it's fine. Otherwise, it's, it's but anyway, I know there's only uh, just there too many birds. We apologize for that. That yeah. was a surprise to us as well. <laughs> Great, you did it so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's the key. That was fine. The picture, the fine. The picture yeah. we know he could hear you all well, yeah. so that's really important yeah. too. Yeah. So at this point, um, he has logged off, and there's nobody else on. Okay, right. great, thank you. And now our next candidate will be in him. person. So, we Maggie, have. Can, may I make a friendly suggestion? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I think I, I'm, I'm just hypersensitive to how they perceive things. I think it's almost a presumption that they're not, anyone can ask questions at all. But if I don't want them to think our not asking questions means a lack, lack of, of interest, because interest. it doesn't. It, right. it, it, we know what they don't know. Our standard is, yes, you can ask a question, but we're, we're trying to limit it in, in only if we have a real inquiry. So if, not to foreclose anyone asking a question, but if you can state it in a way that it's almost a presumption that we're not going to ask, does that make sense? I, I, I was kind of thinking from his perspective, it, Others may have a different view, and I may be just overanalyzing it, but I don't want them to think our lack of questions indicates a lack of interest. And so, I totally understand where, what you're saying to me. But, and I don't know how to... I'm and not, I'm not sure how to... I'm not sure, not sure what the Yeah, give me the words. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do, do others <laughs> want to work? I mean, you said something like, I guess not. Oh, apparently not. Yeah, okay. yeah apparently not. Apparently and not. so I think it is... I'll go to question two, unless any of my fellow board members have a follow-up question. That, that, Perfect. That would do it. Okay. So, and it's, it's okay. you, you no. did a great job, so okay. I'm not being critical no, at no, all. No, 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 I understand. I'm just trying You're to trying to be it. sensitive yeah. to the applicant, yeah. and I totally get it. Okay, anyway. thank you. Well received, thank you. Uh, who, who, who's going to make the call on Monday to those who are not selected? That's, that's you. Yeah. And are you also calling the person that is selected? As long as that's by the board and Yes, absolutely. As it should be. Yeah, don't leave them hanging. Yeah. <laughs>
might be a little challenging with Ms. Osgood because she'll be traveling Monday. True. Yeah. Where is she going? Sure someplace no, she's there. already there. That's why she's going to zoom in today. Oh, where is she? Um, she's she's in coast. the East Coast. Yeah. I believe she's in Maine. Um, Are they given the date to the interview? Later in the courtyard yeah. and LaCour are next. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Um, they were given the dates. They were given the dates, but not what we said was, was interviews of candidates will be on the 26th, alternate date if needed, the 29th. So Tyree assumed that meant it was up to him to make the choice. Oh, I see. And Ms. Osgood assumed it was Zoom. Okay. Because we all knew what we meant. <laughs> right. So we, we've, we've learned that we need to spell everything out. I thought we were doing such a great job. And Tyree's on summer break, so he probably didn't have a lot of reason to hang around. No, he's here. He had a he medical you? issue this morning. 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 Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. I'm Judy Frost. And Hi, I'm Judy. the chairman this morning. And I'd like the board to introduce themselves. Good morning. I'm Maggie Dean. Hi, Maggie. Good morning. I'm Mary Beth Cardi. Hi, Mary Beth. Good morning, Joe Howell. Hi, Joe. Hello, Michelle DeWord. Hi, Michelle. I'm Bruce Porter. Audra, I'm Susan Salcedo, County Superintendent. Hi, Susan. Hi, Audra, Anna. Hi, Anna. Good to see you. So, okay. Nice to meet you um, <coughs> I'm going to uh, let Mrs. Staney ask the questions okay. this morning. And after each question, if board member, she will um, facilitate if any board members have any questions or not. They may not, but <coughs> okay. if they do. Uh, and I'll be the timekeeper. So, <laughs> great. We so we won't go over. <laughs> no, so we won't go over. Yeah, that's a very important role. Go okay. ahead. Thank you, Judy. So, Ms. Amy? First of all, thank you for your interest in serving, and we welcome you. Thank you. Um, I would like to preface that at the conclusion of your answer to each question, I will defer to the board members if okay. they have any follow-on okay. requests. Their lack of questions is not indica indicative of a lack of interest. Just so you know, Thank it's you. more in the interest of time. <laughs> Got okay? it. Understood. All right. With that having been said, we're going to start with question number one. Okay. We have reviewed your application and resume and would like to get to know you better in person. Okay. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in serving on the County Board of Education. Okay, definitely. Um, well, um, I know that that question is, I always wonder exactly how much you want, but we have Judy as the timekeeper, so yes. we'll, we'll stay on, on task. Um, I'm originally from San Diego, so I moved to Santa Barbara in 2008, and um, in San Diego, I worked in nonprofits with uh, transitional age youth. And so in that um, role, I really got to learn a lot about the needs of transitional age youth, um, youth that were coming in the foster system, coming out of the foster system, um, youth uh, dealing with generational trauma, um, underserved communities. So I really was able to um, learn a lot about the needs of the youth in those communities. And um, I served in the role as a, a case manager and then um, and really got to work with them in housing. And, and that was a really rewarding role. And um, when I moved to Santa Barbara, I transitioned into multifamily using that um, experience with housing, but for a larger community. And so um, I work with the Tobes Group. I've been in the Tobes Group in the residential department um, for many years. And in that role, and in coming to Santa Barbara, I really was able to explore um, an environment, passion for the environment. So, and, and community um, involvement and advocacy. So I've uh, been on the Catherine Harvey Fellows with Leading From Within. Uh, I served um, on the cohort from 2015 through 16. Um, I was on the Green Business Steering Committee um, and have done a lot of um, initiatives within the Tobes Group. Um, recently promoted to the Sustainability Director within the organization. 
um, and um, also um, and the board of the Community Environmental Council, which I've been, um, and before that was on the Partnership Council, um, and I've been serving on the board since 2018. In addition to that, I'm a proud mother of a 16-year-old that goes to Dos Pueblos, and I could talk about her <laughs> for the majority of um, our interview um, and, and uh, in this community and as a mother I've been able to really understand the importance of um, quality equitable inclusive education that's that's able to adapt to the needs of the community and um, she I, I couldn't be happier um, with the education that she's been able to receive the community that we've been able to build and I I really appreciate that experience and so I'm coming to um, this board in service of that you know it's like when you receive a gift you want to be able to give that gift back and so um, this is a way that I can give back um, that gift that I've received and my daughter has received in this community um, and in my spare time I I enjoy the arts so I, I, I received my BA um, in fine arts in UC Santa Cruz and and I actually, education is really important um, to me, and so I actually went back to school at the age of 40 um, to get my master's. I went to U USC, and I actually commuted um, from Santa Barbara to USC um, because I really wanted to do this program as a master's program in social entrepreneurship and looking at um, businesses that look at the triple bottom line. So an MBA, but more inclusive of the environmental and social needs uh, that a, a business looks at in their overall community and their impact um, in the world so um, and so yeah I like to I, I, I feel like I'm a very well-rounded well person I don't know how much time I have or how much more you want to know about me um, <laughs> but yeah well. I, I, I think that's a good good uh, <laughs> indication um, I like to spend time with family and friends and so yeah great thank you so much yeah I want to ver verify how we pronounce your first name. Is it Nadra? It's Nadra. Nadra. Um, I think of Nadra Head. Okay. And then Nadra. Okay. Someone told me that, and I'm like, that is perfect. It's easy to remember, so right. Nadra. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? All right, we're going to move on to question number two. Okay. Yours would be one vote on a collective board of seven. The board has one collective voice, although there may be differing ideas and opinions. How would you support board decisions publicly if you were in the minority of that vote? Uh, that's a very good question. And um, I think a lot of my experience, both in um, organizations that I've worked with in the community and in my professional life, um, I've you know, had those experiences where you have a collective decision that needs to be made and if you're, if I'm on the minority of that vote, I understand that maybe this is not my personal decision, but I, I support wholeheartedly the collective. And maybe I may not have um, you know, that insight or maybe there's pieces of the um, puzzle that I may not have at that particular time. So just to understand that this is um, a collective effort and uh, I am part of that collective and I'm always going to support um, that collaborative um just that uh, the success of, of the group. Um, one, uh, I forgot to mention, I'm also on the State Street Advisory Committee. <laughs> so um, what we have values that we adhere to as a group. Mm -hmm. And one of the values that I really wanted to make sure that we um, included was a, co a collaborative spirit. Mm -hmm. So knowing that, you know, when you have a, a group that has a lot of um, different backgrounds, varying interests, you're not always going to agree. And I am, I believe, and I, I highly um, uh, enjoy a diversity of thought because if everyone is thinking the same, wants the same decision, you, you don't, you miss a lot. You know, there's a lot of ways to be blindsided in that um, approach. So, um, in short, I would support it. I would be, I would and have a positive and um, 
solution-based approach to any, um, uh, uh, you know, thing that we come up against. And then in the public, I would definitely make sure that I am uh, um, adhering to that collaborative spirit um, of the overall group. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Are there any questions from the board? We'll move on to question number three. I, I would love to ask a question. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Hall. It's just a comment somewhat facetious, but knowing a little about the State Street Advisory <laughs> Committee, I, I would love to be a fly on the wall. I just can't imagine the diversity of interests and thoughts and hang in there. That's all I can do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's kind of piques my interest. Mm-hmm. It's State Street. I mean, I, I know. I know. I was born in Ray Street. For uh, yes. Uh, all right. Question number three. The board members and county superintendent are elected officials and have separate responsibilities. Board members are elected by voters who reside in their respective trustee areas. The county superintendent is elected by voters countywide. As a board member, in what ways will you work collaboratively with your fellow board members as well as with the county superintendent? Um, again, that's a great question, and I really believe that a lot of my experience with um, the different organizations that I've worked with in the past and are currently working with uh, will help me in that respect. Um, definitely, I like to have discussions about um, certain decisions that are going to be made um, and looking at all the different potential outcomes of particular decision, looking at the opportunity cost of each decision that is to be made, um, and looking at the best interest of the community and the stakeholders involved. Um, Also, I believe that I, I, I try to be a compassionate person, so really um, having that human element, uh, I I like to think that when I move through the world, both in my professional and personal life, I use both my heart and my mind. Um, and I think that you know sometimes uh, decisions can be very cerebral, and so it is very important to have that hum- human element. So I definitely feel that I would like to. Um, uh, infuse that as much as possible um, with my experience and um, my point of view and, and making sure, again, uh, adhering to that collaborative spirit of um, uh, making sure everyone feels like their voices are heard and understood, even if um, decisions don't go a certain way that is, you know, a certain person or myself intends. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. I like your analogy of using your heart and mind. Mm-hmm. Thank like you. That. Are there any questions? All right. Now, Dr. we're moving on to the fourth question, which is, county boards play an intermediate appellate role for expulsions, interdistrict transfers, and charter school petitions. How do you see the relationship between the county board of education and local school board decisions? Um, So the way I look at um, that intersection um, is we can, there are varying differences. So understanding that there are those differences, but understand where there are um, places and spaces for us to collaborate with the overall um, good of the community's youth in mind. So while the district has their very set um, and specific responsibilities and the county has their set specific responsibilities, there are there is overlap in different organizational um, uh, processes and also um, different organizations that can provide services across the board. So looking at um, how to build those networks where we can build those collaborations, um, looking at uh, resources for, and I don't, I don't know how involved it needs to, you know, we want to go in the weeds, but organizations that work with um, uh, ed- training in addition to set coursework 
um, looking at uh, social programs that can intersect and in the county and district. Um, also looking at, I'm, as I'm an advocate of the environment, so how can we infuse environmental programs both in county and where can we intersect that with uh, the district? So just making sure that um, there is communication because sometimes um, there's, I, I like to, I tend to over communicate as you guys may <laughs> have picked up uh, in my answers, but sometimes I, I do that because I feel that sometimes that's needed and um, organizations, pr um, people can sometimes make assumptions that, oh, well, I feel this or, oh, this is happening so everyone understands and that is not always the case. So making sure that those lines of communications where there are those intersections are open and that, um, you know, to, to make sure that there are no things that, you know, slip through the cracks or miscommunications are, um, uh, I can be resolved or eliminated if possible. Are there any follow-on questions? Yes, Mrs. Stewart. Hi. So the question was regarding the, um, appellate role of our board and how the relationship with the Board of Education and local school board decisions in terms of inter-district transfers and charter school positions. Okay. Um, how do you see that relationship between the county, Board of Education, and the district? In terms of, so from my understanding, in terms of the appellate um, role that we have, um, dealing with transfers, different things like in and, and that manner, um, we would uh, have those um, decisions come to us and then we would have to decide whether we would allow for certain transfers, whether we, you know, decisions that we would have and certain um, disciplinary actions. So that would be our decision to make and then we would have that communication with the district in terms of why we are, you know, what why we are making that decision and how we are come to that decision. So I'm not sure if that answers the question or if I'm missing something in that relationship, but that's, um, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm just, um, that's, that's what I, that's my understanding is that we would make that decision and then we would communicate that with the district. Um, we would have the communication with the district in terms of any information that we need in order to make a, um, you know, a, a very comprehensive and, and valid, you know, decision. And then we would communicate that thoroughly with the district. So There is a process in place. And so we are the next step in... Um, appealing a decision by the local school board. So that in and of itself is the role that we would play as a county board member, and then we would make a collective decision to either agree with the, dis the school board or to disagree. Right, okay. and, and, and I, I do understand that role. So okay. I, I, I understand that if the district is not able to make that decision, then it comes to us. So we collect that information from the, decision, from the district, we make our decision, and then we communicate that with them. So just, again, making sure that we have those open lines of communication to make sure that we have all the information that we need um, to make an educated decision and to make the decision that's going to be the best for the stakeholders involved, and then to make sure that we communicate the reasons that we make the decision to the district to the best of our ability. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Our final question to you would be, do you have a concluding statement that you would like to share with us? And I'll okay. let you know you have five minutes. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I did good. <laughs> <laughs> however, however uh, we do want to leave time in case the board has any follow-up questions. So, Got it. So I'll, I'll put that all into um, my decision of what I'm going to say. Um, honestly, when I thought about my closing statement, I, I didn't. I wanted. I wasn't sure what I wanted to say because I knew that we were going to have these, you know, questions in this dialogue, and I didn't want to repeat certain things that I said in the beginning or answers. So honestly, I thought when I was thinking about this, I thought about my a story about my grandmother and my 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 father's mother. So my father's mother, um, she had seven children. 
And the reason why I thought about her is because that is where my the importance of education um, for me that was this that she she planted that seed in me and my family, and um, she always stressed the importance of education. Um, she um, you know this was in the 30s and the 40s as a black woman she was able to become a nurse which was in in Detroit Michigan which was huge. Um, she was a single mother she raised seven children on her own, and unfortunately she was in um, an abusive relationship and because of all of the factors with that relationship, um, the social climate of Detroit at that time, and she decided, I'm going to pick up and I'm going to move to California because at that time, there were so many economic or uh, um, educational reforms that were happening, and she knew that if she went to California, her children would be able to get a good education and, and be able to have a chance to get into higher education. And so I think of her because, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't think I was going to get emotional. Sorry about that. But, you know, my father was able to go to college. A lot of my aunts were able to go to college. Um, I was able to go to college. A lot of my cousins. And just instilling that importance of education was so important and such a basis of, like, who I am today. So... I thought that you're I would have that, and I'm so sorry. I did not expect to get emotional. No, you're going to make me cry. It's okay. It's sorry, okay. guys. That's not professional at all. It's all right. So, sorry. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Um, we do have a few minutes. Uh, does any board member have any follow-up questions pertinent to Madra's application? Well, we thank you so much for your time and for sharing everything that you shared with us today. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> because, yeah, it's, it's important, and I think emotion is great. So Thank you. When I joined this board, I used to tell Bill Cerrone, I didn't know I would cry so much because there are so many great stories that come to these meetings. So. Thank you. And I'm a crier, so um, <laughs> as you can see, so, so again, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry, it's completely unexpected. Um, <laughs> one more story to our um, yeah, that was great. Um, our plan is that we will come back on Monday and deliberate. We're interviewing all the candidates today, and we'll come back Monday and deliberate, and then Dr. Salcedo will make a call on Monday to all the candidates and let them know the results. Are you available by phone on Monday? I will be, yes. Okay. Definitely. Um, and I guess that's it for now. Mm -hmm. With three minutes to spare. Oh, wow. Yay. All right. Well, thank you. Good thank job. you guys very much. Thank you, Dr. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Nice to meet you as well. Good morning. Hello. How are you glad? Good morning, Mr. Niehaus. Very nice of you to come and see us today. Thank you for your interest in this position and your application. <clears throat> I'm Judy Frost, and I'm the chair, and I'd like the board to introduce themselves, please. I'm Maggie Dini. Hi there, I'm Mary Beth Carney. Joe Howell. Good morning, Michelle Deward. Bruce Porter. Good morning, Susan Salcedo, County Superintendent, and Anna Friedland, and Friedland Executive Assistant. Thank you. Excellent. Um, Staney is going to go over the questions with you and give you a chance to respond. I will be the timekeeper, so I will let you know how we're doing on time. Then after each question, Staney is going to ask if the board has any follow-up questions that they want to sure. ask or not. So sure. And I'll try to keep my comments brief so we stay on time. She's okay. the timekeeper. Yeah, I'll let you know. I'll try to stay ahead of the timekeeper. <laughs> Well, I want to be sure we pronounce your last name correctly. Is it Niehaus? Niehaus, a knee and a house. Well, welcome, Dr. Niehaus. Thank We're you. Thrilled that you have an interest in participating and serving on the board. And the doctor is purely optional. I go by Bob, Mr. <laughs> Niehaus. I just Mr. wanted Niehaus. to honor that's, you know, that's something that you've that earned, too. and so you earn that title. Thank so, you. Um, Just before we start the questions, I would like to share with you that in the interest of time, I will be asking my fellow board members if they have any follow-on questions. However, that's only for clarity. 
And the lack of follow-up questions does not indicate a lack of interest. So I just want you to be assured of that. So we're going to start with question number one. We have re reviewed your application and resume and would like to get to know you better here in person. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in serving on the County Board of Education. Thank you. And I'd like to start by saying that uh, I know Peter McDougal just a little bit, mm -hmm. and I understand him to be a person of great accomplishment and high character. Um, so you have some big shoes to fill, and I'm just considered a privilege that you would invite me here as a candidate to fill those shoes. Um, I am a husband, a father, a grandfather. Um, the, uh, I grew up in small towns, farm communities in Illinois and Missouri, where my dad was a pastor. The, uh, I went to college in uh, Ohio and graduate school in economics at the University of Maryland. The, uh, um, I got my first job as an economist when I was uh, a new graduate from college in 1972. And I accepted a job here in Santa Barbara in 1979, right after I finished the doctorate work. The, uh, the company that I worked for at that time moved us out with me and my family, and we um, uh, started our company in 1983. We do economic and market research consulting for primarily for government agencies in, uh, in water, housing, and uh, various environmental issues, a little bit of education, but mostly other things. The, uh, I've been an active community volunteer um, for as long as I can remember, um, co coaching youth sports, scout leader, uh, teaching Sunday school, serving on uh, local government and nonprofit boards. Some of that's in my resume there, which you're welcome to look at. The, uh, um, uh, I believe that I can contribute to the board. I have a good temperament for this. I have skills which are useful in terms of business and organizational skills. I've got a passion for helping children learn, and I'm particularly interested in helping ch children who are lagging behind the achievement of some of their peers. The, I've had some um, wonderful experiences as a volunteer since 2019, a resource volunteer in the schools, a reading mentor at Franklin School. Um, the, uh, uh, I, I love to do um, resource serve as a resource person, I'd go into the uh, fifth and sixth grades and also junior high school and do presentations on the American founding on 9-11 um, um, because uh, I was at the World Trade Center on 9-11 with my wife uh, the day that the terrorists attacked. So I have a personal story that I can tell and that's very powerful to the students and I'd love to do that hard. I've just accepted my first engagement for the new school year at Hope School with their combined sixth grades. That will be happening uh, two days after Labor Day. Thank you. Are there any follow-up questions? Then we're going to move on to question number two. Yours would be one vote on a collective board of seven. The board has one collective voice, although there may be differing ideas and opinions. How would you support board decisions publicly if you were in the minority of that vote? Um, crucial question. Um, this is uh, the essence of democratic Republican government, isn't it? The, um, the people vote. Their representatives cast votes um, uh, on particular issues. And then the majority prevails, um, by and large. The, uh, um, nobody is happy with the outcome all the time. Uh, I recall the Churchill's famous comment to the House of Commons in 1947, democracy is absolutely the worst form of government ever devised, except for all the other ones that have been tried. <laughs> so uh, we, um, we, we have to, I think we have to remember three things. First, we emphasize our common objectives. There's not a person here, not a person on the board, not a person who, does, who works for Susan who is not interested in providing an excellent education to every single student in the county. So um, the second thing we need to emphasize is our commitment to the common process. The, um, the scope of responsibility is laid out through California law and regulations. This board's been around a long time. Precedents have been established on many things. I don't understand them. I only spend enough time on your website to get a, a general sense of responsibilities. But um, those, resp those precedents are, are worth um, adhering to 
worth respecting. Um, and then um, every single person on the board, if you correct me if I'm wrong, takes, you know, takes the same oath to uphold the Constitution of the state of California and the United States. So the third thing, I think, when it deals with the issues of controversy, um, and there I think the important thing is to keep the focus on the board. The, uh, I promised that I would give my fellow board members a ready ear and an open mind and ask them to do the same. Um, when I'm providing an argument for my views, I'll try to be concise and clear. Um, the, uh, I would listen to my constituents, evaluate their concerns, and then depending on the circumstances, act within the, the responsibility of the board. Um, that's, with the absent specific questions, that's Thank the best you. I could tell you. Uh, do any of my colleagues have any questions? Can you raise your voice just a sure. little bit? Okay. okay, sure. Good request. <laughs> I'm right here and I'm... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm sorry. I, I think this question, I'm looking at your resume, one of the things I'm, I'm curious about, um, and I think it relates to the last question as much as, much as any question we have. So the Housing Authority of Santa Barbara, what... How does that work? What What is its purview and, and how does the board operate? The, the, there's a commission which is responsible for the housing authority and the commission members are appointed by the city council. I currently live in Hope Branch, but until about 18 months ago, I lived in the city of Santa Barbara. And at, um, so any resident of the city of Santa Barbara can apply to serve on a board and I was appointed by the city council to be a commissioner, and I held that office. Um, similar to this, I finished out uh, one partial term and then served another four-year term on that board. Those were appointed positions, and then the staff, a very effective staff, the Housing Authority, um, operates and provides the professional structure, and the board makes decisions with regard to policy and uh, final approval of budgets, um, it's a, there's a great deal of federal funding which comes into the housing authorities across America. And so um, we would assure that we were following all the audit and uh, um, policy directives that come out of Washington, as well as the, the requirements of Cal the state of California and the city of Santa Barbara, because these were often joint projects to, to fund different housing, um, affordable housing initiatives. Great. Thank you. And the final year I was the president of that board. Any other questions? All right, we'll move on to question number three. The board members and county and superintendent are elected officials and have separate responsibilities. Board members are elected by voters who reside in their respective trustee areas. The county and superintendent, on the other hand, is elected by voters countywide. As a board member, in what ways will you work collaboratively with your fellow board members as well as with the county superintendent? Well, I've always been a part of a team. I was one of six children growing up, and I saw firsthand, up close and personal, how well teamwork worked and how disastrous things could become <laughs> when it didn't work. Um, I was always on a sports team of some kind. I, my gifts were more for enthusiasm than for talent in terms of <laughs> athletics. Um, I've never done any work which wasn't teamwork. Um, our business operates on project teams, all of our clients in our government agencies um, assign teams to work with us and support us as we're doing various um, contracts. Um, all the volunteer efforts I've ever been done have been team efforts. Um, so I understand teamwork, I understand collaboration and cooperation. Um, the, there are lots of historical examples we can draw on. I, one of my favorites is Henry Clay, the statesman, the Whig statesman from Kentucky who um, was the political role model and mentor for Abraham Lincoln. Um, he perfected the arts of persuasion and compromise. He uh, uh, was the principal author when he was in the House of the Missouri Compromise of 1820, principal author when he was in the Senate of the California Compromise of 1850. He never really deviated from an adherence to the Constitution and a reliance on the ability of people to reach a, co a collaborative. Remember, he had to mediate between 
Daniel Webster and John C. Calhoun. So um, to pull people together um, was his mission, and that's what he did. And I think history is, is kind to him. Um, the, as a board we, and, and board relation, in relationship to uh, the superintendent, uh, the, we had no choice, and really it's our honor to seek to persuade each other and then um, remember that what's in the minority one year might be in the majority next, the next year, and what's a split vote one month might be a, un a unanimous vote the following month. Um, one of the most important examples of this in American education is the fact that the, the arguments that prevailed in Brown versus Board of Education in 1954 were the arguments offered in dissent in Plessy versus Ferguson in 1896. So that finding in 1896 was a separate but equal was a constitutional way to educate children. And the finding in 1954 was just the opposite. So that's a long time scale, 60 years, but it does illustrate a very important principle. Thank you. Are there any questions? Mrs. Stewart, um, can you elaborate a little bit more on the question about um, the relation between a district and our role as a county board member in terms of um, inter-district transfers and charter appeals. Wait and a minute, go ahead that question. Oh, that was the that question. There's another, yeah. I'm, oh, sorry. Go ahead. So sorry, sorry. Mrs. Stewart. <laughs> so sorry. No, it's all right. Did you have a question for item number three? That's all right. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. Okay. All right. We're going to move to question number four. County boards play an intermediate appellate role for expulsions, interdistrict transfers, and charter school petitions. How do you see the relationship between the County Board of Education and local school districts? The well, we're in the middle, right? This county board is in the middle. There's a lot that happens in in uh, Sacramento, in terms of budgets, in terms of policies, in terms of curriculum. Um, that gets passed to us. Much of that gets passed um, with various um, provisos and um, qualifications to the local school districts who are then immediately responsible for educating children. And they are the people to whom parents go when they're upset about an aspect of the curriculum or the way a, um, an issue is being treated or um, virtually anything else. So um, our responsibility at this board um, is circumscribed, and the um, it, it much of it comes to appeals. On any appeal, um, precedent is vital. Um, what we're after is fairness and um, justice, and justice requires that people in equal circumstances be treated equally, and that means it comes down to the facts. What are the circumstances? So. As part of this board, I would rely on the, the superintendents and staff and the information that they compile and bring forward as to how a particular appeal relates to precedent. Um, we, uh, we would then do our best as a board to adjudicate those appeals and make the best decision that we can based on the facts of the case. Um, we, and that, of course, that's going to vary from one, from one individual circumstance to another. Very good. Are there any questions? Mrs. Stewart? Can we answer the he answered the question. <laughs> I, I do have one other point on that. I think there are some things that on which this board can take initiative. I may be wrong because I don't have the experience to judge this very well. But um, for example, in setting policies or providing um, limited budgets to facilitate volunteers like me, um, there may be something that can be done. Um, uh, for example, I had to pay $62 for the privilege of having a background check done on based after my fingerprints were taken so that I could go and help as a reading mentor in the kindergarten at Franklin School. Um, that, I believe, was a very effective program. Um, Casey Kilgore there took that school from being well behind state medians to significantly above in about a four or five year period. I can't take any credit for that. I came in at the very end. That was already done by the time I got there. But the, um, 
there may be a, someone else for whom the $62 would have de deterred uh, that person from being a, a good volunteer. Or it's possible that it would be even more effective if there was someone who could coordinate volunteers, um, organize resources, um, and um, make that service available to local districts. That could happen at the county level, could happen at the, at the local board level. So there may be some things on which initiative could be taken here. I just have to put in a plug for Partners in Education, a program <laughs> under okay. the um, Education Office. I'm a board member, um, as is my colleague, Joelle, and they, they actually do have a clearinghouse for volunteers. Okay, a well, database that does that work. So okay, well, I need to know, know more about that yeah. because I'd love to do more than I do in terms of going into the schools. Okay. In, in your just can't help but join the plug. But the, the points you make are, are so good yep. that if there's a hurdle, a lot of people are interested, but I don't have time to get a fingerprint on this or that. And, and Partners does an effective job of that, but they also match uh, school needs with volunteers. Some people uh, love to read to kids, but their expertise is something else. They don't want to do that. They want to read to kids. And so it's, it's matching. Uh, the interest of the volunteer with the need of the school. But I'm just sorry, I didn't know about that two or three years ago. Yeah, Very good. Yes. Okay. So a connection has been made here. That's good. Are there any other questions or comments? All right, we're at our concluding question, and that is if you would have a concluding statement to share with us. And you have about three minutes. Good. Um, <laughs> I can do it. Okay. <laughs> um, I think that history is kind to people like Henry Clay, who devote themselves to operating within our constitutional system of government to accomplish the best that they can. Um, he died a few years too early to avoid the Civil War, but um, the uh, history has just generally been very kind. And I think um, what I... Um, you'd like to do when I start my presentations to sixth graders is to recount the story of uh, Benjamin Franklin leaving the Constitutional Convention in September of 1787. A woman of his acquaintance in the crowd called out, well, Dr. Franklin, what kind of government have you given us? And he said, uh, he said, well, it's a republic, madam, if you can keep it. And his point was well taken. It takes work to keep a republic because people have to govern themselves. And the uh, people will only do that if they love their country enough to put the effort into it. And how do, they, how do you come to love a country? Well, you have to understand it, and you have to know what it stands for, where it came from. So um, in essence, if this republic doesn't live in the hearts of the people, it doesn't live anywhere. It doesn't matter what's under glass back in the National Archives. It doesn't matter. It's just words on paper, old paper. It's easy to say it doesn't matter anymore. Um, so. I see our public schools as vital both in um, nourishing our children and in nourishing our republic. If the, um, they can flourish or they can both wither and fade, eventually die, and that's up to us. So we have to ask ourselves, will history be as kind to us as it has been to people like Henry Clay or Abraham Lincoln? And the measure, the best measure we can offer has to do with the children who are in our schools right now. Will those children care enough to keep the republic for the generations that follow them? So we have to have a 50-year time horizon. And we have to be thinking about when, and if I, when I go into, I ask the children, I say, well, how old do you think I am? I'll get some number. I say, well, how old are you? They say, well, we're 10. I say, well, I'd like you to fast forward 20 years. Who's going to be keeping the republic in 20 years? Will it be me? Probably not. Will it be your teachers? Maybe, maybe not. Well, who's left? And they kind of look at each other. So that's how history will judge us. So I'd love to be part of that. You're planting good seeds. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Yeah. All right. Um, we do allow for the board members to do any follow-up questions pertinent to your application? So I'm going to open that up to the board now if they have any questions. 
All right, and it's not due to lack of interest. <laughs> you be sure of that. All right, well, thank you for your time. And to fill you in on the process from here, we uh, interview all applicants today, and on Monday we will meet again to deliberate and make our decision, and Dr. Salcedo will place a call to all candidates on Monday. Are you available on by phone on Monday? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I, I think my cell phone number is on the application. Yeah. Okay. Then I think we are ready to adjourn. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd be interested in hearing your story about 9-11. It's actually on YouTube. Is it? The Young America's Foundation did an interview of my wife and me up at the Reagan Ranch a year or two ago. Oh, wow. And uh, it's, it's on there, but I, I can give you the... That would be great. I'll pass to Susan the interview. Okay, great. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. That would be great. Thank you. I love you. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Hello. <laughs> yes. Can can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello, Ms. Osgood. How are you today? Okay. I'm good. Thank you so much for accommodating me. Um, I'm going to go. The, I'm Judy Frost. I'm the chairman of the board, and I'm going to go through the, the process here for a minute. First of all, I'm going to ask our board members to introduce themselves, so we'll go around the room. Hi, welcome. I'm Maggie Daney. And I'm Mary Beth Cardi. Joe Howell. Hello, Michelle DeWord. Bruce Porter. Hi, Mary. Susan Salcedo, County Superintendent. Hi, Mary. This is Anne, Executive Assistant. Hi, Susan. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Ms. Daney to ask the questions. And after each question, the board will be given a chance to do any follow-up that they might want to do. Um, I'm the timekeeper, so I will make sure that we, that you have an idea of how much time you have left as we get towards the end. And for now then, Mrs. Daney, take it. Thank you. Hi Mary, welcome and we appreciate your interest. Um, I would like to preface before we start the uh, set questions that in the interest of time, my fellow board members will be asked to do follow-ups to each specific questions. If there are no questions, please be assured that it's not due to lack of interest. Um, you've been concise in your answers and that did not prompt any further questions. So having said that, uh, we'll start with question number one. We have reviewed your application and resume and would like to learn a little bit more about you here via Zoom. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in serving on the County Board of Education. Okay, thank you again. Um, I grew up in a family that valued education. So I grew up in um, Central Washington State, and my daddy was always taking classes. He took classes at the local junior college, and then eventually um, WSU, and my Mommy went back to nursing school when she was 40 years old. Very rare in those days. Uh, they, they valued education so much that they motivated us to do well in school. And so we lived in a small town in central Washington. And my older sister was the valedictorian of high school. and then, my brother did the same thing, so of course I had that challenge set before me and was able to do that. Then I went off to a two-year college down in Portland, Oregon, and um, enjoyed it there, and then transferred down to Pepperdine in Los Angeles, and um, finished my last years there with a degree in sociology. It was a different Pepperdine than you know, probably. In fact, it was the very last year that Pepperdine was in um, 79th and Vermont. So if you can sort of imagine the neighborhood around USC, it was, that, that was the neighborhood. That was actually really valuable for me because I grew up in a, a state that, in a rural area that had little diversity. 
and I was thrown into a very different situation, and uh, I, I benefited from it. I still have a friend for 50 years that grew up in a very different background and has a different skin color than I do, so I, I really valued that. Uh, and after a year um, at Washington State University doing office work, I went to Penn State University to get a master's in rural sociology. And so uh, then after I finished that, I was able to get a job on the faculty at Penn State for uh, a few years while my husband finished up his PhD in physics. So I met him there and uh, we got married there at, at Penn State. And then when he did finish up his um, PhD, he said, okay, honey, we can start a family now. So uh, we were excited to do that. And we moved out to Los Angeles, uh, starting at Hughes Aircraft. And after one year there, we got transferred up to Santa Barbara at SBRC. So we have lived in uh, the house we live in now for 42 years. So that's been great. Uh, when my children were growing up, they attended Elwood School. So that was a, a big opportunity for me to get involved in the schools. And so after well, the first year, I got involved with the PTA. And then um, I did all different jobs on the PTA, running the jog and all those things. And then uh, site council. And the district advisory committee, I really enjoyed that. I uh, actually got to be friends with Dick Shelton, who was the superintendent of the Goleta Schools at that time. That was fun. And um, then also I was on the Language Arts Adoption Committee. I was on the Student Attendance Committee for Goleta. So I did a, a variety of, uh, had a variety of leadership roles during that season. That was great. And then I decided um, I better help out um, with uh, getting ready for college for my kids. So I started um, substitute teaching in the, the, the Santa Barbara School District. So mostly um, at Goleta Valley Junior High, but I had experience of all K through 12th grade. And about halfway through those two years, I decided, well, I really wanted to go back and get a master's in education. So I ended up at UCSB in the master of ed program and, um, and did that. That took a year. I came out with a clear credential as well as a CLAD certification. That just happened to be a time when there weren't very many openings for teachers. And so I applied with the Santa Barbara District. I did have an interview for San Marcos, but it was for a position that also included drama, which wasn't my strength. Um, so at the same time, I applied at Santa Barbara Christian School, and I got the job there. So that began um, my, my experience in private education. After the first four weeks of school, I got a call from David Cash asking me if I would come over and take the place of Michelle Hughes, who was moving to the high school and become a teacher at Glade Valley Junior High. And I was so tempted. I remember wanting so badly to take that job. But I had signed a contract, and I knew that it wouldn't be fair for me to leave after four weeks of school. So I continued uh, at Santa Barbara Christian for four years teaching junior high uh, English. And then I moved to Coastline Christian Academy in the year 2000 as the principal. So along that way, I got my administrative services credential through Cal Lutheran. And um, I had a lot of experiences there at Coastline in many of the areas that you would be interested in, um, boards and budgets, and parent communication, and student achievement, student behavior, all those things. So they, um, my next 16 years included a lot of that. Then I retired in 2016 to help take care of my sweet daddy, who was ailing. In 2018, he passed away. And uh, my husband and I, uh, in cooperation with 
Paula, the Galita mayor, we started a homeless outreach, uh, which now is over in Isla Vista. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mrs. Osgood. I, I'd like to point out that we have four questions left and we have 10 minutes. We've used half the time. So just to give you okay. a heads up. Okay. All right. Fellow board members, are there any questions for um, Mrs. Osgood? All right. We'll move to question number two. Yours would be one, one vote on a collective board of seven. The board has one collective voice although there may be differing ideas and opinions. How would you support board decisions publicly if you were in the minority of the vote? Well, that's such a great question, and I'm sure it's something that comes up. It reminds me of the book, um, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. For those of you who've read it, chapter four is um, seek to understand before seeking to be heard. And so I think that clearly the other person's perspective, that you could actually present that perspective uh, as, as your own, as the one that the board uh, felt was the most reasonable course of action. So if, if there were an opportunity to speak publicly about it, I would just present the, uh, the viewpoints as they had been presented, because you have to listen, 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 and remember all those things. And I think, I think that's the best way to handle it. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? All right, question number three. The board members and county superintendent are elected officials and have separate responsibilities. Board members are elected by voters who reside in their respective trustee areas. The county superintendent is elected by voters countywide. As a board member, in what ways will you collaboratively work collaboratively with your fellow board members as well as with the county superintendent? It is interesting that the board is divided up geographically. Uh, and probably there are different concerns in Santa Maria and Santa Inez, from Goleta or Santa Barbara, um, and helping each other come up with strategies to solve problems in the area is really fulfilling and community building. Um, finding commonalities in our concerns and identifying differences in concerns is very helpful. Um, since I've lived here for 42 years uh, in the same house, I think I have a pretty good um, feeling for what the concerns are in my district, and I've worked extensively with educators in this area. So I feel like this is something that I have something to offer. All right. Are there any questions from the board? All right. Question number four. County boards play an intermediate appellate role for expulsions, interdistrict transfers, and tra charter school pe petitions. How do you see the relationship between the County Board of Education and local school districts? Well, obviously the relationship between your, your board and the local school boards needs to be a really strong and positive one. Working with the low, local school districts to find out their bases for the decisions that they made would be really important. And to overturn such decisions would require research into the specific circumstances of each case and all the while being careful not to generalize. I remember a situation at our school where a student had a Swiss Army knife in it. Uh oh, we lost. Maybe can you hear us? Swiss Army knife in his pocket. Did I lose you? Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it, uh, you started I, off I with was telling about a, a boy that was going. Through. 
turn down the speaker. If she turns off the Is that better? Let's go back. Mm, that might help. Hold on, we're checking. Um, She's got a very Beth Joe problem. Okay, sorry. <laughs> So we, we still have signal. It sounds like it was cutting off on her end. Yeah. So okay. may, uh, maybe if you turn down the speaker, that might help. Perhaps if you turn down the speaker. Okay. I'm getting a lot of feedback. So if it sounds like I'm in and out, that's what's happening. Okay, let's try but it. It was a situation where a boy had a, a Swiss Army knife in his pocket. We found out that he had been at a Boy Scout meeting the day before, and the, he had worn the same pair of pants, didn't realize the Swiss Army knife was in there. And so it was one of those situations where you had to really use some wisdom in knowing what to do. And likewise, if you have people coming to the board asking for a change in a decision, it would take a lot of research and um, bringing it down to the specific situation and trying not to generalize too much. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from the board? All right, Mary, our final question is asking you to conclude our interview with you with a final statement, if you wish. Okay, so I just want to thank you again for meeting with me over Zoom. We've had this um, vacation plan for a long time and so I appreciate your willingness to do it. Um, I've had experiences both in the public and the pi private sector of education. And actually over my whole life, um, for, for 50 years where I've been um, past high school and college, but um, all of my life I've been very involved in education. And I think I might have some strengths and insights that perhaps Others don't. That might be a valuable thing for this board. And uh, it's such a, a time as this where there's so many challenges in education and uh, the post-COVID challenges of academic excellence and bringing the students back in the classroom. And the, um, it's a, a real challenge to provide an excellent education to all children. Rich and poor, genius and challenged, shy or outgoing, motivated and unmotivated. And um, I know you have many good candidates, but you'll know if my strengths are uniquely suited to your board or not, if I'm the person you need or not. But again, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Uh, thank I want to open up to the board any follow-up questions pertinent to your application. Well, thank you for your time. Enjoy your vacation, and I'm going to defer back to our chair. Thank you, Ms. Osgood. Um, just wanted to let you know what the process is from here. Today, we're interviewing all of the candidates, and Monday, we will meet again to deliberate and make our decision. I understand you're traveling on Monday. Um, Dr. Salcedo will be calling all of the candidates on Monday, so I hope that you'll be able to find a time in your travel schedule where you will be able to connect and um, uh, let you know what yeah. our decision is. Thank you. I think we have two connecting, well, we have three different flights, so when I'm in an airport, I can always turn on my phone. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and see if I have any messages. Great. Well, we wish you the very best on your journey home. It may be a long one. <laughs> and may you travel safely. <laughs> Thank you. Safe Thank travels. Bye-bye. Thank you. Judy Frost is our board chair, and she'll make some introductions. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Niles. Nice Hello. to see you today. Nice to see you, too. Uh, I'll let you know what our process is here. First of all, I'm Judy Frost. I'm the chair. And we'll go around the room for the board members to introduce themselves. I'm Maggie Daney. Welcome. Good morning. I'm Mary Beth Cardi. Good morning, Joe Howell. Hello, Michelle Dubert. Bruce Porter. 
Susan Salzberg, County Superintendent. Anna Friedland, Executive Assistant. Okay. Nice to meet you all. And we're, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Mrs. Staney, and she will be asking the questions. And after each question, she'll give the board an opportunity to do any follow-ups that they may have. And I'm the timekeeper, so I'll let you know how we're doing on our time. And Ms. Staney. Again, welcome. Um, we're glad you joined us, and we appreciate the fact that you have an interest in serving on the board. Um, I would like to preface before I start the five questions that in the interest of time, my fellow board members, as Mrs. Frost indicated, would be asked for any follow-up for clarity on each of those specific questions. However, the lack of follow-up questions does not indicate a lack of interest. You've either answered it concisely or there are no questions from the board. So having said that, we'll start with question number one. We've reviewed your application and resume and would like to get to know you better here in person. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in serving on the County Board of Education. Okay. Well, my name is Alex Niles. I'm a fourth year at UC Santa Barbara where I study the history of public policy and law. Um, and I'm interested because I think that public education is one of the most important things we do as a society. Um, I've spent most of my professional career doing advocacy for public education in the higher ed space. And I'd really love for the opportunity to be able to continue that work serving my community, Santa Barbara, that I care deeply about. Um, more than that, I also really have a personal connection to the work this board does to oversee um, the county's juvenile ed educational facilities and our special ed. Um, you know, when I was in high school, my twin brother actually struggled a lot with academics um, and mental health. and. Um, he struggled a lot with school and ultimately uh, in our senior year he spent about a month in a juvenile uh, detention facility um, and you know he got out he got a GED um, and he's now navigating attending college but with that I've seen firsthand what it's like to have a loved one a, a community member you know struggle have so much to offer but to make mistakes and have to face the consequences of that um, to have our normal public education system not necessarily be the right environment for them um, and I really believe that we have an obligation as a community to ourselves and to these folks to you know serve them well and to get them what they need so that they can you know be the people that they want to be um, you know beyond that I think that I have a unique perspective and lived experience to offer the board beyond my you know own family experience I'm also uh, more recently in public school than I think perhaps many members of the board might be um, I have the experience of attending school during COVID and you know, seeing firsthand the challenges of coming out of the pandemic. Um, and, <laughs> and um, oh, and then professionally also, I have two years of experience as a board member and as an executive officer of the UC Student Association, uh, which represents all 220,000 UC undergrads to the UC administration, as well as the state and federal governments. I'm going into my third year there. Um, Last year, I served as their chair of government relations, where I oversaw their legislative and budget advocacy. Um, and this summer, I was elected to serve as their president, so I'll be leading that organization for the coming year. Um, and with that, you know, relationship building is kind of core to that work. Um, and so it's, you know, building relationships with other board members who represent their own campuses. It's building re relationships with folks throughout the student community. Um, understanding what they need, um, what their needs are, and then how I can use my creativity, my expertise, uh, my experience, my energy to put myself at service to their needs. Um, other relevant experience from UCSA is you know, navigating large complex institutions like the UC and like the state government, um, and understanding how to put the needs I've learned from the relations I've built in the community um, into effective advocacy in these spaces. There's also you know, depth of experience reading budgets, reading policy, um, being able to talk about that, explain that to folks, and relate that to the needs that we see on the ground. Um, also, finding funding streams within these kind of large institutional spaces to serve these specific needs. Um, so, it's a record of effective advocacy and finding ways to serve folks um, that I'd like to bring to this board. Thank you. Do any of the board members have any follow-up questions? All right, we'll move to question number two. Yours would be one vote on a collective board of seven. The board has one collective voice, although there may be differing 
ideas and opinions. How would you support board decisions publicly if you were in the minority of that vote? Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, I think that the decision of the board must be upheld and fully served. Um, and there's no room for undermining the decision of the board even if there is a personal disagreement or impeding its work in any way. Um, that being said, I do think, not that I think this would happen necessarily, but if there were a disagreement, I think it's important that folks are able to express principled, um, you know, express principles behind that and be candid about that. Um, my experience in student government is a lot of speaking truth to people in decision-making uh, positions and being able to maintain positive relationships with them while also being able to speak candidly to hard truths. Um, and so if there were a disagreement, I think that experience would inform how I'd respond to that. There's a time and a place to express principled opposition while still being able to maintain beneficial rep relationships with people you disagree with. Um, yeah. Thank you. Are there any follow-up questions? All right, question number three. The board members and county superintendent are elected officials and have separate responsibilities. Board members are elected by voters who reside in their respective trustee areas, whereas the county superintendent is elected by voters countywide. As a board member, in what ways will you work collectively with your fellow board members as well as with the county superintendent? Mm -hmm. So interpersonally, I'd always be collegial, professional, um, and intentional about building successful collaborative relationships with members of the board and Superintendent Salcedo. Um, I'm here to be a team player, and I also have a true appreciation for the fact that you know I don't have as many years of experience in this community um, and on this board as everyone at this table. And so I'd hope to be able to build positive relationships um, in order to kind of benefit from the experience gap that you know y'all have um, as we work together to find ways to add value to the schools and the community that we serve. Um, beyond collaboration within this board, I'd be intentional about building relationships in the community again um, and using the perspectives that I get from those relationships as well as my own expertise, um, creativity, and energy to contribute effectively to both the policy decisions that this board makes as well as um, other work that we do including like educating or excuse me recognizing outstanding educators and other members of the community. Um, and I'd like to be able to work with all of you to find ways to you know, further that work, um, including like, I know this board, for example, rec uh, recognizes veterans who didn't graduate high school, so uh, maybe there's a way that we could find to recognize other members of the community who are serving outstanding ways and set up a system to be able to reliably identify folks like that um, outside of maybe our own professional networks. And so we'd like to be able to build those collaborative and successful relationships with all of you all to do that effectively. Um, I just want to say, you know, on this board, I'm going to be a member who knows what's going on in the community, whether it's the schools that we serve or, in my case, Area 2, um, SB Unified or Glee Union that are not necessarily directly overseen by us. Um, I would want to visit all of the educational facilities that we serve um, directly and, you know, just make a, an intentional effort to show up, introduce myself, and listen to folks. Um, not to be too repetitive, but... My work on UCSA, is, you know, it's been all about relationship building. That's a skill set that I've developed through there. Um, and it's been centered about using my, um, you know, using these relationships and using my own ability to find ways to be able to effectively advocate for people and support people in advocating for themselves. Um, I'll give just one quick example about what that looked like to put some color to this. So last year as Chair of Government Relations, I, oversee, I oversaw UCSA's state budget advocacy. Um, in that process, we identified a few niche communities that had kind of specific outstanding needs. So there was undocumented students, there were former, formerly incarcerated students, um, there was former foster youth at the UC, and then there's also uh, the UC has programs called mm -hmm. SAPEP, which, serve, um, which reach out to students at underserved high schools and community college districts to help them navigate the application process and also to help those students succeed once they reach the UC. So these were four separate areas where we identified specific unmet needs. Um, we undertook a process of working with program directors, students infected or involved with all of these programs, to understand what the needs were, and then to translate those into specific budget asks. We took those to both the UC Office of the President, um, as well as the state legislature. 
we develop the advocacy strategies to try to pursue funding for these programs. Um, we got the UC regions to endorse these, and then we were also the, we were the primary sponsor of these asks to the state. Um, we put students in the room to advocate these, for these ourselves. We understood the issues and were able to communicate effectively what the impact of funding these programs would be for the UC. And then ultimately, the, the team that I led as chair of government relations got $37.5 million in ongoing funding to fund these four separate programs last year. So again, it's you know, experience building relationships to get real results. Very good. Does anyone have any questions? All right. Question number four. County boards play an intermediate appellate role for expulsions, interdistrict transfers, and charter school petitions. How do you see the relationship between the County Board of Education and local school board decisions? Um, I think that families and communities and local school boards know themselves best and that in these decisions, you know, I as a board member feel like that needs to be central and needs to be respected. I think that having, again, personal relationships and a firsthand understanding of what's going on in these communities would enable me to be better able to, you know, participate in making these decisions as a board member. Um, I also will just say that I think, you know, the experience I have you know, with someone like my brother, seeing the challenges that people can face would certainly inform how I go about kind of considering these difficult questions. Great. Any questions for the board? All right, Alex, in conclusion, we would like to offer you the opportunity to give us a closing statement for this interview. Okay. Yeah, I'll just briefly summarize. Um, thank you all for your time and consideration. Um, so as a board member, I would work energetically and collaboratively to further the board's existing mission, missions, especially our work overseeing the county special ed and juvenile hall educational facilities and playing an important role in the community by recognizing our accomplished community members and educators. Um, I recognize that as a candidate, I don't have the same years of connection to our communities and familiarity with these schools. But the love that I have for this community is real. The drive to serve the schools that this board specifically oversees is very real for me. Um, I understand the limits and the strengths I bring to the table. And so, you know, I have the humility and the will to kind of compensate for what I don't have and to fully utilize um, the expertise that I do have. Um, you know, also I'll say that in student government, by definition, we don't have longstanding relationships. So the past two years, I've you know, it's been all about quickly building um, deep, meaningful, productive relationships with folks in the community. And I've been successful at translating that into effective advocacy. And I'd like to do the same thing as a board member here. Um, so just to fully wrap up, I have the experience in relationship building, advocacy, and policy to serve well on this board. I bring a unique perspective and life experience to the table to inform the policy decisions that we'll make. And I want to put this all to work in serving this, these schools and this community. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, now I'd like to open up <clears throat> excuse me, um, any follow-up questions to the, our board members that, that re rely specifically on your application. So are there any questions from the application for the, Alex? Hi. Hi. Alex, it seems like you're very deeply connected to the UCSB community, and you jumped in really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, can you just tell us where you grew up? Where did you... Yeah, I grew up in the South Bay area. Um, it's a little town called Los Gatos. It's outside of oh, San yeah. Jose. Okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. So when you graduate from UCSB, do you plan to stay in the area? Um, yes, uh, at least to serve out the term. And okay. while I look for grad school, that's, yeah. That's the question. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyone else have a question? Well, thank you, Alex, for your time. Um, you're extremely articulate, and you absolutely know the system, and so we really appreciate your time and interest, and so I'm going to defer back to Chairman Frost. And I'd just like to explain what the process is from here on out. We're interviewing all of the other candidates today, mm -hmm. and then we're going to regather with the board on Monday and deliberate and make our decision. And then Dr. Salcedo will be calling all the candidates on Monday. Will you be available by phone on Monday? I will be, yeah. Okay. And then you'll be getting a call from her to let you know how it turns out. Okay. 
Okay, thank you all again. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. You too.